hey guys welcome back to the channel this is big jim with big jim fishing yep haven't been out on the water since my last tournament but we're out on the water today and i'm actually going to shoot two or three videos today but today's video is the lake master vx chip yep and we're going to get right into it right after this All right, guys, we're out on the lake. I just put the boat in the water. And uh, I didn't come super early, but I wanted to get here before lunchtime, before all the crazy jet skis and wake boats get here. But the first thing you need to do, you know, once you get your unit powered up and everything, is whenever you're using Lake Master and you're using, um, you know, Hummingbird graphs, you need to make sure you got your water level correct. And for me, you know, I go to my phone here and I go to my apps and I go to the TVA app and I'm on Old Hickory right now. And I know, and you have to look this up if you don't know, but I know that Old Hickory Lake is, summer pool is four, four, five. So I'm going down to here to check the latest measurement was at 6 a.m. today and it was 444.85. Let me see if I can get that to focus. 44485. So I know it's a little bit below summer pool, but it's not that much below. So what I do Anytime I'm, you know, below 445, I always offset by a foot on the map. And the reason why you do that is because for safety, you know, and we'll get into, you know, marking stuff on your map here in a minute. But what I do is, of course, I got my map up, hit the three lines, and you can see we got water level right here. So if you touch water level offset, you can see I have it to negative one. You can use your dial right here and you can, you know, if you're in a flood stage, you could bring it above. And as you can see, as I change it, the map changes because it accounts for your water level offset. So I'm gonna go back to negative one which is where I should be. And that gets my water level offset set up. Now, let's talk about Lake Master Mapping. Lake Master Mapping is probably the most detailed. Let me make sure I got my screen backlight all the way up so you can see, yep. That's how you adjust your backlight. Now. If you're running Solix's guys and you have it turned all the way up to 10, it's going to draw about 33% more voltage than if you have it on 7. So most of the time, you know, when I'm out fishing or tournament day, I have it on 7 or 8. But And then when you get where the sun's really, really bright, you have to turn it up to 10 to be able to see the detail but uh, I only do that when I have to, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna have it turned all the way up to 10. Now, you can see I'm at a spot that I frequent quite often because there's some tracks and waypoints, but I wanted to show you how the VX chip is different from the regular Lake Master chip. Uh, the first thing you will notice is that you can see I'm, I'm coming up right in through here and let me ex before i start deep diving let me explain some things the rings around my boat are called range rings and you can set them to whatever you want i do it to match 
what my 360 and mega live and my side imaging are so that I have everything set the same so that I know when I pull up on a spot, you know, I'm going to be within range. This yellow line is my heading. And that's because I have the hummingbird heading sensor right there which is more accurate than the built-in sensor. The built-in sensor that come in the units, you will find that you have to be moving for them to read correctly. So if you ever get to a spot and you're sitting still, if you don't have that back there, the, the heading and GPS puck, your map will start to spin on you. So by adding that, that keeps that from happening. And uh, some other things about on the mapping, I always like to run heading up. You can change that to north up or course up. Um, this right here is your different chart presets. I always use, I use fishing. And then you got your layers with shaded relief and aerial imagery. We'll talk about that in just a second. And this is auto, auto chart live. If you wanted to make your own map, you could do that in auto chart live. And that right there just puts the cursor on the screen. And then of course, everything else that I got going on, you can see I've got my, my trolling motor is a Minn Kota Ultrex with link. So that's why that's showing up. <clears throat> I have my Mega Live is active. My 360 has a question mark because I haven't put it in the water yet. And let's, I don't remember what that right there is. I think that just shows down imaging. And this right here shows I have my external puck hooked up. Of course I have my compass over here. And then these right here are overlays, okay? And we'll talk about that in just a second. But that's basically your map, okay? So when you first get your, your map and you wanna set it up, you'd go to home, settings, chart. And uh, I'm gonna spin, spin the boat around maybe here in just a second. No, we're good. Uh, I just wanna make sure there's not too bad of a glare. I use global settings so that it will talk to my two Solixes on the front. I have them hooked up with an Ethernet switch. My chart source is Hummingbird, and you can see Hummingbird cards, VX chart cards, and it's highlighted. And that is right inside of there. That's my VX chip. Solixes have room for two chips. So you can put an extra chip in there if you want to take snapshots and stuff. Uh, and when you come over here to VX chart settings, the base mount software, you can see my water level offset. And there you can adjust your text size, your symbols. So that's pretty much that in, in the settings menu. Now, when you have your menu up and you hit these three lines right here, it brings up the other menu. And right here, you got color palette and you can choose various color palettes. I like four and that's because Old Hickory Lake is a shallow TVA river impoundment lake. Okay, it's not deep like Dale Hollow, Center Hill, a lot of your upland lakes like Lake Cumberland. If, if I was on those lakes, I switched to color palette one, and that's because of the shading relief. What shading relief is, you know, these are the different ones you can choose. What shading relief is, is you can come down to uh, chart options, and you can go to depth highlights. 
and I have my depth highlights on. I have my shallow water for safety marked at five feet with red. And you can go down to different depths. My highlight number one is five feet to eight feet. And I have that in yellow. And then eight feet to 12 feet, I mark it in green. Now you can see, you can adjust these depths, okay? Like I hit that, I gotta dial it all the way back to eight feet. And the reason why I have them, uh, you can customize them is for however you're fishing, you know? Um, and for me, I'm looking for zones. Like on the map here, you can see I got, I'm in my green zone here. I'm in 10 feet of water. So I know that anything that's green is eight to 12 feet. And then I've got my yellow and then my red is less than five feet. Now, why do I like the red less than five feet? Well, as I zoom out, it really helps for navigation when you're driving around the lake. And I'm gonna show you an example. You can see right here where this creek goes out to this river channel. You can see all the red that I have and you have to navigate that. So let me dr drag that over and we'll drill down. All my local people here from Middle Tennessee will know where I'm at, I'm at Spencer Creek. But you can see, you know, it's, it's dangerous right in there and you don't wanna be running wide open. That's an actual channel to get in. So this is where highlighting your depth ranges can help you with navigation. And you can see I get it, you get out here to the deep water and I have it set up with deep water as being a deep blue color. Now, while we're at it, let me pinch that in a little bit. This is the advantage of having a Solix. You can see how my depth ranges, you know, show up on the various creeks that I fish. And you can see how it can become important. See that little peninsula right there? And then you got a little bit of deep water on both sides of it. And look at this point right here, guys. Everybody that fishes this lake knows about this point. There's a duck blind out there. But you can see how the contour lines come real close together. But you can highlight the range that your fish might be holding in. Now what's really cool about the VX chip over, you know, the previous edition is that on the previous edition, when you would drill down real tight, it would get pixelated. So I'm gonna go to this spot right here where this uh, creek channel swings in. And this right here is actually a public fishing park that has a dock. So let me drill down on that and you can see how detailed that it'll get. Boom, you see how it went from being pixelated down to really drilling down on it? And that's all the way in. So you can see, you know, we got one foot, three foot, five feet, marked out to 12, 21, 23. So, you can really get in depth on your contours. And you can see from my tracks, I've fished here before. I really like that place, but. So that, uh, that shows, you know, how the new VX chip is more defined and how you can drill down on, uh, you know, getting your colors to what you want. Now, when you come back, uh, I, want, I want to show you how to come back to this. You know, we're back on the map. You hit your three lines. That brings up your menu. Go to chart options. Uh, we already talked about depth highlights. Chart settings for fishing. On objects, you can select navigation, water, or land objects onto your map. 
depths and contours. Contour lines, those are all the lines that break where your depth is. And I have the density on high and I choose black for my contour lines. And you can see you can adjust your palette on your ranges. So that's depth and contours. And here's where everybody gets confused. Here is the layers. These are, are things that you can add to your map. And here's what I was talking about earlier, shaded relief. Let me mark this, and I'm gonna show you what it does to my map. What it does is it has preset colors, and it will actually populate your map according to the depth. Now, like I said, this is Old Hickory Lake. It's very shallow. So you can see there's hardly any blue. I mean, I'll have to drag it all the way out to the channel for you to see blue. So that's why I do not run this on Old Hickory Lake. Uh, when I'm up at Dale Hollow or Center Hill Lake, which are deep impoundments, then I will run shaded relief. You ask, well, what's the advantage of shaded relief? Well, on deep lakes that you're really looking for contours and so forth, and you're fishing deep, you really would want that. And I will tell you that every time I go, you know, to uh, Center Hill, Dale Hollow, Tim's Ford would be one, uh, even Percy Priest, these are all Middle Tennessee lakes, I will turn shaded relief on because it makes your map pop. It really shows your uh, bluffs, it really shows your drop-offs, your ledges, um, all the contours, it, it makes it where it's real defined. But on Old Hickory Lake, which is a shallow lake, I do not have it. I do not use it. So I'm going to go back to shaded relief and turn it off. Aerial imagery. You can turn that on. And what does that do? Well, you can see here, now you can see the neighborhoods around the lake with the roads. That's what the aerial imagery does. Okay. So let's go back to some other chart options under layers. And I'm going to leave that on. And, and that's all for that menu. We can go back up to general. And this is where you can choose your orientation heading up motion mode true vessel offset auto now why is vessel offset auto important i'm going to pull this menu up you can have off on or auto and i'm going to show you real quick why you want it in auto okay so let me clear all my cursors out and everything and let me drill back down to where i normally are okay whenever you're you have your map and this would be the same, you would see this if your offset was off or if your offset is on auto, it's gonna put your boat in the center of the screen, okay? When you turn offset on and leave it on, your boat is gonna be at the bottom of the screen if your heading is up. So the boat icon would be down here. If you turn it to auto, which is what I recommend you use, when you're not moving, your boat is in the center, and when you get up on plane and you start to running down the lake, your boat will drop back. That way you can see more of the map in front of you. And I'm gonna pause right here, and I'm gonna show you an example of that. All right, so here we go. Whoa. 
we're moving around this creek. Look, the skiers and the wake boaters are starting to come out, man. That sucks. But, uh, all right, I'm in six feet of water now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, <coughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump up on plane and you're gonna see the boat icon slide back so I can see the map. plane boom it jumps back to the center of the map so that's having it in auto it's under general vessel offset okay and then down here we got vessel I want to show my vessel with heading Uh, let's see here. Here's something you can do if you wanted to I don't have it on it's kind of cool You can check side imaging range. So if you mark that Look what it did it gives you Let me let me zoom in a little bit It gives you indicators for your side imaging range and believe it or not you, I mean, you can see it, it automatically matched up with my range rings, but you can have them where they're different. You can have your range rings, uh, four range rings at 20 foot intervals will take it out to 80 feet. You could set your side imaging out to 120 feet. And all that does is so that when you're driving down and you're using your side imaging, you can see where you're reaching on your map. Like if you have multiple views up. And while we're at it, let me go ahead and show you guys how to create a multiple view, okay? Because I just did factory restore on everything, and let me show you how to set that up. So you'd go to Home, Views, and this is the view I like to have for scouting. So I don't use any of the presets. I go to New View. I let it load up. And my favorite view for uh, scouting for tournaments and stuff is I like this one right here. And the reason why I like that is I want my side imaging to have the most pixels. So I want it to fill up the screen. I want my map on one side and I want uh, either 2d or down imaging on the other side so you can see right here this box is highlighted orange that means it's asking what do you want here so on that right there i'm going to choose side imaging and then on this one on this side i'm going to choose down imaging and then i want my map my lake master vx okay so i'm going to name it i'm going to call it scouting one because I, I create many maps i mean many views so scouting one save and when you come to your on all your views when you pull up your favorites you can see there it is right there so i'm going to hit that to go to that view so now what I got is I got my Lake Master mapping right here. I got down imaging and I got side imaging. So I want this as a favorite. So I hit my favorite icon here. And I'm gonna, and you can see I have it, I have it marked right here. But let's say I didn't have it. All you do is hold down and it would save it right there. You hold it down for about 10 seconds, you'll see a little thing scroll across and it would save it. So there's my view. Now on your map, if you wanna control what's going on on your map, you just touch that screen there 
and you can use your dial to zoom in or zoom out. Now here's what's really neat about using your VX chip with on the Solix is that as you're going along and you're scouting and you can see I got my side imaging marked out to there so that's 100 feet which means my rings are set up at 25 foot intervals. Uh, let's see if I can find an object real quick. All right, right here is a good example. We have uh, some fish right here. You can see they're throwing a shadow and bait fish right here throwing a shadow. So if I wanted to mark where those fish were, as you can see, they're right here. And you can see on the down end imaging, they're just off the bottom. I can mark that by just going, I can stop the screen, scroll back, hold down, and it asks me, do you want to mark a waypoint? I could say, yeah. I could choose school of fish. I can color code it green. Hit your X button to make your cursor go away. And boom, look, it pops up on the map. And if you scroll back, it's on your side imaging. So that's how you can uh create some things that you could use using the overlays on your vx chip so let's get back to our chart and talk about some other options <clears throat> let me spin the boat around here a little bit okay we finally got away from everybody but i need you guys to do me a favor if this video so far has been informative, pause, please give me a thumbs up on it, okay? And then at the end of the video, please leave me a comment and share this video with anybody that use Hummingbird products because the Lake Master VX chip can not only be used in Apex and Solix, but also Helix units. So, getting back to the map. All right, so let's talk about some other options. Okay, so I'm on my map. Whenever you want to do something with the settings, you hit the three lines, chart options, general. So we talked about the side imaging ring just there. I'm going to take that away. Here's your range rings. You turn your range rings on right here. And you can choose how many rings you want, okay? I have four. And four rings at 25 feet intervals will mean my ring my last ring will be out 100 feet and you can change it you can do like four rings at 20 feet and that'll take it out to 80 feet i really love this feature and this is the number one comment i get on my videos that deal with lake master mapping how do you turn on the range rings well here's how you do it guys right here okay you have your chart up you bring up your menu go to chart options go to general range rings and this is how you do it okay so i want to go back up trolling grid you can actually put a trolling grid on to your map so you know where you have trolled and it will mark mark it for you i don't use this I'm a bass fisherman. I don't troll for my fish, but that option is there. And cursor data, you can mark that. And then when you mark a cursor, it'll give you the data. I don't use that because I'm, I try to keep uh, a lot of my stuff as simple as possible. Of course, you, I have my limits that are pre-marked. My north indicator and my scale bar is marked. There's a scale bar right down there. So that's under general. So nav data, I have my nav data on 
and I have waypoint spot locks, saved routes, my active track, save track, and I track. I have them all marked. And I think that is a default under fishing, which you can see right here is fishing. So that's all your chart options, okay? And the last thing is your view options, okay? So on your view options, that is talking about what do you see on the screen, okay? We know we're gonna see the chart, but it asks, do you want the sidebar? And I do want my sidebar, okay? So I have it marked. If I uncheck it, my sidebar goes away with all my little favorite icons, music, trolling motor, all of that stuff. So I want that on. So I'm gonna go back to view, turn my sidebar. Edit view, that's where we went in there and made one, okay? So I'm gonna get out of that. Forgive me, a, another freaking wake boat went by, so it's shaking. I'm gonna let that go away. And then data overlays. This is where you can choose your depth, your time, your GPS speed over ground and your voltage that will always be displayed, okay? And you do that under data overlays. You can see I have it on. I'm editing the overlay on the chart. And then you can mark what you want. And you can see, I really like how the VX chip, you can highlight multiple depth ranges. You can go out even even further you can do up to five depth ranges and if you live on a deep lake that you know has deep water up to 100 feet or deeper i highly recommend you shaded relief and then you can mark all your depth ranges that you want to yeah so that is a deep dive on the lake master vx chip i've really enjoyed making this video for you guys and i i hope you like it share it Give me a comment, but if you haven't done so already, please click that subscribe button, hit that like, and mark that notification bell. And hey, this is Big Jim with Big Jim Fishing. As always, I do a live on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Central where we deep dive on things, but we will see you guys next time on Big Jim Fishing. We'll